what's going on everybody this is island hopper tv and today we're coming to you from st bart's we're going to show you the best things to do let's do it that's right island hoppers we're coming to you from one of my favorite caribbean islands st bart's here with 20 best things to do let's go at St. John Beach, which is one of the most famous beaches on St. Bart. If you look right behind me, you can see Nikki Beach. This is the main party area of the island. So it's on St. John Beach, J-E-A-N. Now here we are at Nikki Beach. Yeah, so Nikki Beach is actually a luxurious restaurant right here along the waterfront. When you come here, you should prepare to dress up with nice beach attire. Obviously, because you're on the beach, you don't necessarily have to wear a tuxedo or anything, but you should still dress nicely because it is a luxury beach club. Right behind me here, you can see Eden Rock. This is one of the most famous hotels on all of St. Bart. Eden Rock really stands out along the Bay St. John here. And it is a hotel, but it's also a restaurant. If you wanted to just dine here, you can get valet parking, which is really convenient because parking in this area around Nikki Beach and the Eden Rock area is limited, as with many places in St. Bart's. But you can see they've got very nice gourmet food and it is a luxury restaurant, so do expect that kind of experience, but very clean, crisp, Probably one of the best places you'll want to go for a nice day on the beach right here at Eden Rock. And after you have lunch and maybe a cocktail or two, in this case, I ended up getting some sashimi and sushi along with two Bloody Marys and I felt really great. But then I went for a walk around this white sand beach here and yeah, it was just relaxing. They also have the umbrellas and the day beds that you can rent. There's also going to be people windsurfing and from this beach here you can also spot airplanes taking off from the incredible St. Bart's Airport which we will be highlighting a bit later on because the way the planes come in is very unique. And here we have a view of Bay St. Jean. You can see the airports right there. And you can see from up above here, this bay is beautiful. And the island is just so spectacular. I really enjoyed this place. And I've been to many different Caribbean islands and this one really stands out for its cleanliness, its safety, and just beautiful scenery. And Bay St. John here is just spectacular. But here's a look at those airplanes, how they take off. And we'll be over there showing you how they land, but you can see the way they take off right out over the ocean here in the bay. And before we head out and show you the rest of the island, I just want to tell you there are more restaurant options down here besides Nikki Beach and Eden Rock. A little bit better pricing and some people may be able to be a little bit more casually dressed here without any issues. It's a beach, so please realize that you don't have to get too dressed up. I just wanted to point that out. Now here we are doing some of that plane spotting. So you'll notice there's like a hill and when you go up that hill, you can watch as the planes literally fly right over the road with maybe 10 feet clearance and then just drop right there into the landing strip. The pilots actually have to have a specific type of license in order to be able to land in St. Bart's. So not every pilot can land here. It takes a lot of skills and they do it daily without any sort of real error or safety issues. In fact, just arriving into St. Bart's on one of these planes is an experience all in of itself. If this is a little bit too risky for you, another way you can get to St. Bart's is by ferry boat from Phillipsburg on St. Martin's. And here we are now at Grand Cul-de-Sac. Now this here is a beach on the east side of the island. You could call it the northeast side. And there are a few different hotels over here. You would probably need to get valet parking unless you're one of those who show up early enough. Then you can stay at the beach and not have to worry about needing valet at one of the hotels. Now, one of the things I like about this area here is it's like a lagoon, so it's shallow water. You can go out pretty far uh, and notice that it's waist deep. Also, you'll notice lots of windsurfers out here enjoying the shallow waters of Grand Cul-de-Sac. There's also a really cool hike where you can get nice views looking down onto the beach. And I don't know the name of the mountain, I just called it the Grand Cul-de-Sac Hike. And it only takes about five to 10 minutes to get up there, maybe even faster for some of you, but you get great views. It's very picturesque, you can see. Looking down at the windsurfers on one end and then you have a more peaceful lookout point towards the Atlantic Ocean. You can even sit down on a bench, but you can see 
looking down at the beach. Very beautiful up here. And I would say this was one of my highlights for St. Bart's. Also, as we continue to show you around St. Bart's, I wanna let you guys know we are going all across the West Indies and the Caribbean. So there will be, mo so there will be more Caribbean travel guides coming up. Now let's talk about windsurfing. So we've already kind of highlighted this, but this is actually a very popular activity. I don't think I've ever seen a place where windsurfers were so liberated and free out on the water without any real problems. I mean, these guys look like they're having a blast out there. So if you're into windsurfing, or if you've ever wanted to learn windsurfing, St. Bart's right here at Grand Cul-de-Sac might just be the place. And these guys were getting some serious air, sometimes for four to five seconds at a time. Now here we are at Plage Celine, also known as Celine Beach, a very beautiful beach, totally clean water. You can kind of see St. Kitts in the distance. It's really a magical place out here at Celine. I actually stayed at my hotel right down the road from here, and I was able to walk to this beach every morning and evening if I wanted to, so really nice calm relaxing place to stay in Celine but just having access to this beautiful beach in the morning for a swim was awesome for me so from what I've been told St. Bart's is one of the safest and most pristine clean islands in the world uh, I've been to many Caribbean islands and this one's definitely a league of its own. Yeah, I mean, it stands out to me when I'm on St. Bart's, there's no litter anywhere. It's super clean. As you go around the other Caribbean islands, you'll see there is a little bit of litter on some of these other ones. But this one, like I said, it's a league of its own. It's very clean, pristine. It's like a heaven here. Now here we are at Governor. Please, before you jump into the comments, talking about my French, I know I need to work on my French. I really am struggling with that. But either way, this beautiful beach is another one just like Celine. This one's a little bit further towards the west and the south side of the island. So if you wanted to go here, I highly recommend it as well. So I mean, if you compare Celine and Governor, they're both amazing. It's just for me, Celine was easier uh, to get to because my hotel was nearby. But as you were going around the island, you can see St. Bart's really has a lot of beaches. That's some of the top things you're gonna do on this island is check out these beaches. Now here we are in Gustavia. Gustavia is the capital and the largest city on St. Bart's. It's basically the main cosmopolitan area where they have the restaurants. This is where the ferry arrives from St. Martin and they have the immigration port processing here, lots of shopping, and when a cruise ship comes in, they also arrive here and they dock the people in Gustavia before everyone kind of disperses out. Here we are at the lighthouse in Gustavia. You can see beautiful lookout point. They also have a botanical garden up here, but I would say the main reason you're coming up here is to get a view of Gustavia from up above because it is so scenic. There is some history up here with the remnants of an old French fort. You can see the cannons up here. I mean, I would have loved to have been here back in those days because it's just such a beautiful place. By the way, I am going to put that link for the St. Martin video down below in the comments. So do look for that. Now let's highlight that ferry to St. Martin or this ferry that goes from St. Martin to St. Bart's. It is around $75. They also have one going out of Marigot which is on the other side, where the French side of St. Martin. But uh, either way, getting a ferry out here, one of the most popular ways to get out here. I would say that the actual ride itself takes around 40 to 45 minutes to get from St. Martin, Phillipsburg to St. Bart's. And here we are now at Flemons Beach. So Flemons is on the north side of the island. For those of you who are gonna be staying up on this side, this would be a beach you would check out. Whereas the southern beaches are a bit different facing towards the Atlantic. This one's facing towards the Caribbean. 
And when you're out on this side of the island, you will see there is some nice communities that you can drive around. Some of them have lookout points and you can see what it looks like looking out towards the north side. These lookout points are just really amazing. Anytime you get a chance, pull over and take a picture. Try not to block traffic though. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna hike down to Columbia and it's on the side that faces towards St. Martin, so we'll call it the Northwest Point. Now, I will say this was the most intense hike that I did on St. Bart's. It did take about 35 minutes to get down there, and then coming up, it took about the same amount of time. It's definitely more brutal coming back up, so definitely bring lots of sun protection and plenty of water when you go down there, but it is worth it because you're gonna have the place to yourself. In the afternoon, there are a few more brave souls who do come down here, and there's gonna be sailboats out there in the water. They usually take a dinghy and then they just kind of ride that to the shore or they hang out and snorkel here. Talk about local food here in St. Mark's. As you can see right here, I've got some cod fritters. Very delicious, traditional French food. We've got other types of food and I'll show you right now. French food is definitely the main cuisine here. Don't expect too much exotic foods to be here. I mean, there might be a couple Asian restaurants, or Italian restaurants, but most of the food is going to be French. One great way to save money is to go to the supermarket and get food. All right, we got a great view here of the Grand Fond. As you can see, Grand Fond looks right out towards the Atlantic Ocean. Actually, if you go beyond that, you would see the Antigua Island, Barbuda, that whole area right there. So really nice viewpoint right here at the Grand Fawn. And then when you actually get to the coast, you are at the Grand Fawn, which is actually a place for people to hike around and get some exercise. And here we are at Plage Toini, another beach. When you're down here at Toini, you can possibly see humpback whales or maybe even some other types of whales out there especially during the months of December, January, February, March. So do be on the lookout when you come down here. So here we are at Petit de Cul-de-Sac, which is Little Cul-de-Sac Beach. Very nice here. You may want to go to Little Cul-de-Sac if you're looking for less crowds in a nice beach. Here we are at the village called Corasol. Just showing you around here real quick. Corasol is like a second port to Gustavia. It's just on the other side of the ridge. And here they've got a lot of Airbnbs and people living here, just really hard to park. Either way, there's a beach here and it seems like a nice tight knit small community where people know each other, the neighbors talk and hang out. Now let's talk about some really important things for you to know. Number one is I would highly recommend getting a rental car while you're here, but we're going to give you some more information about things to know when visiting St. Bart's. Let's get into that. Now for some quick information about St. Bart's. So the way that you arrive here is either by airplane in a small plane that holds about 12 passengers because no larger planes than that can arrive here or ferry boat. Either way, you're going to basically connect through Simpson Bay in uh, St. Martin. So most of you are gonna have to go through St. Martin before you can come here. Uh, it does take 35 to 40 minutes to come by ferry if you're coming from Phillipsburg. If you're flying from plane, by a plane, it's gonna take about 15 minutes. So keep that in mind when you arrive. Now when it comes to getting around the actual island, I would highly recommend getting a rental car, an ATV, or a motorbike. Taxis are very expensive, although you usually have to get picked up by a taxi to take you to your accommodation, and then you can get a rental car. I used Maurice rental car while I was here. They actually brought it to my hotel, and they pick it up from your hotel, and then they drop you off at the airport or something like that. So I found those guys to be very good. They're called Maurice, but there's many different rental car companies at the airport that you can find. So now let's talk about safety. So when I first got here, they told me that I can leave my hotel room unlocked. They told me I can leave my car with the keys in it. And so they basically say that this island is one of the safest islands in the world. And from my experience, yes, it is safe. There's like no crime. I mean, anything can happen at any given time, but uh, 
for the most part, a very safe place. Uh, everyone talks about how they leave their hotel room just open, their house unlocked, their car unlocked with the keys in the ignition. I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. So St. Bart's a very safe place. And if you enjoyed this one, you can watch our St. Martin travel guide next or our St. Kitts travel guide.